I'm much of an handle holder in the cups. I know when you was a kid and you was looking at jobs, you just had shouting and swearing and chucking stuff about. And now I know you just sit and have a cup of tea and look at it. And you can do with this, you dry your teeth. And then you always go back to it and then I say, the job was the best. And that was yesterday. Do you know anything about borage? Is some sort of husk that they end up getting oil out of. But you have to, you have, you have like a field of it. Like if a field that side, you need like 200 hives of bees to pollinate the borage. And it, and it was just saying that the, the, the bees that they had last year, there was off the tits. The bees were just like heroin addicts because they'd sit in the hive, they'd go, they'd go out, right, and then nothing happened for a week because the, the bees would go out of the hive into the borage, get off the face on heroin, like, they, on the, on, and, and they'd be in a hive for a week and the, the hive was dead for a week because they're just all off the faces. All the bees are off the faces. In the, it's, it's just fascinating and fascinating. <laughs> How long is it since the last book? Yes, it's three years since we wrote the last yeah, book. Yeah, how much has really happened since then? Hey, my God. My main goal at this point is to try and achieve 300 miles an hour. There is one man that has achieved it, but he did it unofficially, right? And he's dead, right? He's Bill Warner. Um, another man, he's officially the world's fastest man at 296. He's dead. That's why you're looking there and the bike's just in a million pieces, because it's always in a million pieces there, because I'm... Well, if we try this, because there's no one re you can really go to. There's no one that you, because yeah. no one's done this. No one's done this. And anyone that was bloody good, he's dead. I love that. that if you get it wrong, it kills you. That's why I think, oh, that's fantastic. It's worth doing, isn't it? It's worth doing. There's nothing like yeah. this. There is nothing like it. There's nothing yeah. like it. Like when I've been fast, yeah. I cannot sleep for two days yeah. when I've been fast on this bike. That, yeah. I'm like a bee in a borage field. I cannot. I'm just off my face. Yeah. Off my face on speed. So why aren't you doing it on a, does it not count if it's on a strip, like a drag strip? Yeah, but they're not long, long enough. Right. They're not long enough. You need two miles. Oh. I run at Cottesmore, I did 276 mile an hour there, which is 1.75 mile, and that's tight. That is tight to get stopped. That 0.75 of a mile when you're doing 276 mile an hour. It's, it's not every inch, but I, I don't know. Yeah, it'd be, if, I, if I did 300 mile an hour, fuck it, it'd be tight. It would be tight. But I've got this other place I've been going to in Scotland, Macrohanish. Well, that's like 2.2 miles. You see, it's not that far north, that Glasgow's only here. There's Edinburgh. Look, it's probably yeah. further south. I'll show you the picture of this and then you'll get the gist of what I'm on about. Yes, this is in the winter. So that's how it looks, you see. That's sort of what Bill Warner's bike looks like. He did 3.11 in a mile and a half and he tried to do it in a mile and that's what killed him. Again, wind got him. Right. So I ran my bike like that, fully naked. Yeah, that's the, that's the lift figures that, yeah. in that. That's the lift figures. That's gonna feel like you're just trying to get ripped off the bike though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's bloody terrible, yeah. When you look at the data, like I did 276 mile an hour in April last year and I used full throttle for 0.8 of a second. And before I got to six gear, I'd not even used beyond 50% throttle. And I did 282 mile an hour in a longer course and I never used full throttle once. It's not stability that's the issue, it's just that I get pushed off course by all the outside, like the, the winds of the thermals. That's why you need to be sat on a runway, it really, when it's dark. Oh, we went to Scotland and me and, me and my dad were sat on the runway at four o'clock in the morning waiting for the sun to come up. And as soon as the sun's come up and the sun's warm the land and the land starts reflecting that heat back to the atmosphere, that's when you get problems. So you look at like a superbike, the most sort of longitudinal G that they would see with a superbike is like, even a Grand Prix bike would be like 0 0.6, 0 0.7 of a G, like longitudinal G that, you know, that's, that's sort of pushing you back. Well, that thing there's like 2.2 .2 G between 120 and 150. I mean, that's doing 0 0.6 of a G between 220 and 250. So that's accelerating the same rate as a superbike. Between, like a superbike will accelerate at like 0 0.6, 0 0.7 G, at like 60 to 80 mile an hour. But I'm accelerating at that rate between 220 and 250. So they're just, they're, they're wild, they're wild. There's nothing like, there's nothing like it. Nothing like it. You get, once you've been like that, that's it now. I have no interest in a conventional superbike, no interest. Like that, because really, I was only ever wanting to build stuff in sheds and go fast anyway. And it's just the best way to do that was to go superbike racing. But now I've discovered this. Oh, bloody hell. And you get the, all the joys of it and no bullshit. Because all the superbike racing, probably the majority of it is bullshit. Like the young lads that come for us, I tell them, you're going to fuck your knees. You wait till you're my age, I tell them. I know, I know, I don't really work, does it? But you're right, do you want my jacket off?
Keep fit windows, old school. It's a very involving drive. It's 800 horsepower, it's a bloody handful. Oh, I went and raced from bloody Mexico to bloody Utah. Oh, on the bike? Yeah. Bicycle. Not a lot of enjoyment in that, I'll tell you. Bloody brutal it was. It was bloody horrible. Well, I started years ago, probably started 10 years ago doing 24 hour mountain bike racing. And then I sort of got a bit bored of that. And then what is the next thing, which was the, the world's longest mountain bike race and was meant to be the world's toughest mountain bike race, which is the, it's the world's longest mountain bike race, which is the total the total divide from Canada to Mexico. That's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life but it gave me the most satisfaction when I finished it. And that sort of got me addicted to doing these daft sort of ultra mountain bike races. It just when I finished it, I, like, I cried at the end, and like, nothing makes me cry, but I cried when I got to the finish, and, and I just wanted that feeling again. And, and then time goes by, and I'm trying to find another race, and then I find out about this Arizona trail race, which they said is the world's toughest mountain bike race. And I thought, all oh, right, well, I thought, the, I thought the Tour Divide was the world's, no, 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 no. No, the, the, the Arizona trail race isn't the world's longest, but it's the world's toughest. And anyway, I thought, well, it can't be that tough. It's only 800 miles, it can't be that tough. Anyway, I went and did it. It was bloody horrible. Yeah, it's the world's <laughs> toughest mountain bike race. I started in Mexico, I finished in Utah. I had to drag my bike through the Grand Canyon. It was, yeah, you read about it, it was just. <laughs> I set off in Mexico and I probably got like 400 miles into the ride. And I, I, I was near the city called Phoenix and I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna go home. I'm just gonna pack up my bike, I'm gonna go home. And I, I'd had half a day in a filling station thinking to myself, I'm just gonna go home. And I, knew what, I knew what would happen if I went home. I would just pain myself into th what have you done you I just you weak knee bastard what have you done what have you done why have you given in and what I would end up doing is going back the following year to complete it because I hate having unfinished business like big races like that I hate it and I knew what I'd have done I'd have just gone home but I'd have been miserable for 10 months and then I got I'd have gone back and done the race so I said I'll tell you what you do so I had, I had half a day in a filling station um I had a word with myself and thought right you can finish this in a week it's only another 400 500 miles of tough riding I can finish this. All you've got to do is, is, is suffer for a week. Suffer for a week. And obviously, the, the last bit's not going to be as hard as, 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 as the bit that I've just done. Of course it's not. Anyway, it was. It was bloody worse. <laughs> it was bloody miserable. But I'd set my stall out and I said, right, it's only, a, it's only a week of suffering. You've only got to suffer for a week and then you can go home. And then you can say that, tick the box and walk away. And yeah, I talked myself into it. And you'll read all the stupid reasons, yeah, why. Anyway, I talked myself into it and I finished the ride. And we're probably two years on from that now, and I still haven't seen one little smidgen of satisfaction from finishing that race. It was miserable. It was miserable. It's not a bloody bike race. It's a bloody. It's a pushing race. It's a pushing. It's a. It's a bike pushing carrying race. It's not a bloody bike race. It's not. No one told me that. No one told me that. Well, but then I remember. I remember thinking to myself, Oh yeah, yeah. When I did the tour of the tour divide, I met a bloke in a cafe in bloody Wyoming somewhere, right, when I was just riding through there. And he got talking, I'd never heard of the Arizona Trail Race, and he got talking about the Arizona Trail Race. And he said to me then, but it probably took me all of that time for me to realise what he'd said. He said, oh yeah, yeah, that's a bloody tough race. He said, it's more of a crawling race than a biking race. And really, I didn't realise that until he actually did it. Yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, he did tell me that. Of course he didn't mean it. Of course he didn't mean that it's more of a crawling race exactly. than a biking race. Of course, he, that's what I, of course he's talking shit. Yeah. I thought where I would struggle would be going through the Grand Canyon, because you've got to go through the Grand Canyon. You can't, you've got to carry your bike. You, the wheels of your bike can't touch the ground. And I thought, um, that the only place I'll struggle in that race is through the Grand Canyon. But once you've got to the, you go in the south rim of the Grand Canyon, you go down the bottom, across the bottom and up, which is only like 30 miles. Right, but carrying your bike, and it's, it's, a, it's a mile vertical, right? So obviously you've all, it's, it's like 30 miles by the time you come out. So I go in the south rim and come out the north rim. And I thought, and once you've got to the north rim, it's only 100 miles to the Utah border where the finish line is. And I thought, oh yeah, yeah, I'll knacker my ankle, but whatever, I'll be able to get 100 miles. It's only 100 miles, I'll be able to get to the finish line. But I didn't know that before you got to the Grand Canyon, I was knackered before I even got there, because there was that much walking, there was more walking than biking before I even got to the bloody Grand Canyon. Then I had to suffer my way through the Grand Canyon, and then I had to suffer my way on the, 100 mile of, oh, bloody hell. You're bringing it all back now, I just, oh, bloody hell. I'm still trying to do stupid things now. I'm still, all the time trying to knacker myself, trying to brutalise myself. I'm bloody 39 year old, and I'm still trying to knacker myself. All that shit aside, the number one thing at this point in time is, is get, let's get to 300 mile an hour. Yeah. Let's, let's hopefully, that is massive. That is massive. let's hopefully not kill us ends while trying to achieve it. But if I do kill myself, I, I, it's, it's sort of good to find that. It's good to find something that's worth dying for again. You know, because I did all of that road racing and I, I was willing to die for that for the probably yeah. for the first four or five years. And then after then, I was just doing it because it was sort of easy. It was yeah. sort of easy and I wasn't really willing to die for it. Yeah. But now I found that thing. Oh, yeah. Obviously, I don't want to kill myself, but when you've found that thing, 
Like, I told you. Like a bee in a box. Yep. Yep. Sound job, sound job. I'll close that, I'll close that.